Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and in this tutorial I'd like to show you how to bring in external media like videos uh, into your environment and actually set them up to not only be in the environment but of course actually uh, kind of produce light as well. So this is the recent uh, theater block out that I kind of set up um, just to test out like some shapes and everything um, and play around with the lighting and basically yeah I have this big bright like white screen and I want to put a little bit of content on there um, that way it's just going to show up more properly and yeah have a more interesting subject so uh, the first thing that you want to do is just go ahead and actually import your mp4 files uh, and that's what I'm going to be using at least for this video uh, into your scene however you'd like you can either go and import um, but additionally you can also just drag so I'm going to drag uh, this one in um, and then I'm going to drag in one other one or two others uh, as well so uh, like I said these are just mp4 files nothing special about them um, that I have uh, just of some royalty free kind of video that I got from Adobe Stock um, and yeah going to be using those for my screen here so now that we brought them in you know uh, we have them down here we can click on them if we would like so I can double click like this and if I wanted to I can hit open and it should yeah basically play the video so as you see here this is a simple kind of fly through of a um, like forest that kind of liked um, then I also had a car driving and then also a whale uh, a couple of whales swimming which thought that the blue would be really nice to kind of show off in the uh, with the lighting and everything so that's why yeah I like this one a lot um, so now what we're going to do is it's very simple actually with UE5, especially, um, I'm in 5.3. So what you can do is you can literally just drag in this, uh, box and it's immediately going to be ready to play. Of course, you know, the shape and everything's not, you know, going to work for us. But if I were to, um, I have it set to simulate right now. If I were to do that, you're going to see that, yeah, it's now playing that video. So that's all, you know, to actually get it in here. But of course, uh, there's a couple of things that we need to kind of update with that. Um, because yeah, we want more, we want our lighting, um, and whatnot. So, uh, one thing I'm going to do is going over here, you'll notice that like it is square here, but then when I press simulate, uh, it's actually going to a certain aspect ratio that might be a little confusing to try to work with. Um, and so what I want to do is go down here and you can see under the, uh, presets here, um, for the mesh, uh, there's presets, presets, and then there's auto aspect ratio. So I actually want to set the aspect ratio to be probably 16 by nine, because that's how these, uh, like 1920 by 1080 videos are kind of coming in as, um, and so that'll be an aspect ratio, uh, pretty much correctly. Uh, you can also, yeah, customize it to whatever your aspect ratio is for your video. Um, but now we should notice that if I press uh, simulate, it shouldn't really change size at all. So that means that we got the right aspect ratio. Um, so cool. And so now what that means too is I can scale this up and it's going to basically, um, you know, kind of expand upon that. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fill in that spot where I had my uh, missive window or not window but a uh, screen so not too bad and about there so there we go um, I can now probably delete this and now if we play so I'm going to hit play we have our video playing on the big screen which is pretty cool um, now, of course, the other point, of course, is like, we want the light to come off of it. Like nothing's really changing in the environment. And as you know, when you go to the theater, you're kind of sitting there, the, the walls and everything are really being illuminated by the screen just because of how prominent the lighting is. And so I definitely want that same effect to be coming off of this screen. So, um, very simple, but I basically just want to kind of dive into that. 
Um, and as we're talking about theaters and all, uh, I wanted to mention as well, movie theaters have always had an issue with theft. And that's why I also want to mention how important it is to also keep yourself safe and up to date with online risks and your personal security. For me, I feel like it is every week where I hear from a friend or relative that has been impacted by their personal information being stolen. Data brokers sell that information to anyone who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, relatives, it's all out there on the internet. And that's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T recently revealed that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, thankfully, Aura does all this for me, and best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep my data secure. If my info was compromised in the AT&T data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy, and I also value yours. You can go to aura.com forward slash Peyton Barnet, which is also linked below in the description, to start your two-week free trial and see how Aura could start saving you today. Now back to our environment here. Uh, like we said, we basically have our screen set up and all, and the next step is I just need to get that lighting from it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click here, and this goes into the actual, uh, it's called a media plate, so you can also find them here. And this is what was basically created when we uh, drug it in it just automatically created one we can also create them from scratch here um, but it is pretty easy if you just bring in your uh, existing kind of uh, file and all uh, to just drop it in like that so uh, yeah so that's what we have here when i click on car and as you can see uh, there's a couple of different features through here you can run through it and um, yeah, if you want shadows, uh, whatnot, um, a lot of different features, but the one that at least we want right now is actually going to kind of pertain to the material itself. So what I want to do is go down here and double click on the material. And we can find that it is a material instance. So I'm probably going to want to jump into this parent material. And as we look through here, we can probably see why it's currently not producing any light. Um, and the most recent, uh, or most like probable cause, is going to be the actual material type. So what I'm gonna do, just to make this simple, and since, uh, cause like you can use like the opacity and everything to cut things out, which is really great if you want to have a video where you have the background kind of cold out or so. Um, yeah, super powerful to be able to do that stuff. But since we are just using the full frame and all, we don't need that. And so what I'm gonna do is click here, of course, go and make sure that we are set to surface for our material domain. Then instead of um, translucent, which is probably what it's going to be on if you just drag it in by default, I want to go back to opaque um, and then what I want to do is change the shading model from unlit to default lit. So it's going to be nice and simple, kind of going back to a basic material, um, but this is still driving into the emissive color. Uh, now I added this multiply just so I could kind of control the value of the light and all uh, if I wanted to make it more intense. But that's all that is that's basically kind of running through there um, and I don't have anything else plugged in. So yeah, now we have that set up, um, we can back out and simply if we press simulate, now you can see we're actually getting lighting on the ground, which is pretty awesome. I can see the fence post going by, I can see kind of the red of the car. 
Um, and I think that's super powerful with what you could potentially do with this kind of stuff. Um, for a better example, of course, that you saw was pretty warm overall. But if I were to bring in that whale, so kind of drag that in. Um, and yeah, we'd need to do the same kind of things that we did with the other one. But uh, I believe since it's going to be using the same material, uh, ma like main one, then it's going to automatically produce the light. So there we go. And you see, yeah, since we did that kind of to the parent material, we don't have to do it again. So now the whole room is being filled in by blue light uh, from the whale uh, video. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, like I said, you know, you could come in here, sit down and uh, getting the bounce and everything with Lumen to uh, it's pretty powerful, honestly. Um, so yeah, this is a really cool way that you can put in media uh, to your environments. Um, like I said, it's relatively easy to just drag them in uh, now with the like new Unreal Engine 5s. Um, and so uh, primarily, I think all of the versions have this uh, feature. Uh, it was like um, probably not the preview, but um, yeah, really cool. And like I said, I think has a lot of potential with it. So uh, just with a couple of adjustments, of course, with the material as well as um, you know, some of the actual aspect ratio settings, we can really quickly have a screen in our space. Uh, I could do this with televisions, um, with basically anything and, uh, just get, yeah, some really cool results. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to drop them down below in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. All right.